it's Robin Riley for Dobello's Designs. Welcome to my Talk Crafty to Me video tutorial. This tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create some very unique backgrounds by simply using salt and a little bit of pepper. Before we get started with the supplies, I'd like to invite you to join us in our Facebook groups. We have two of them. We have the Del Bellos Design Lounge, where we feature all of our Lavinia products. And that is where you can post all of your beautiful creative makes using the Lavinia products. We also have the Del Bellos Design a la carte page. On that page, we would love to see what you create with all the other products that Patty has in her store. We have other social media platforms that we are involved with. That's Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. There you'll find a lot of things that will spark your creativity. When you go to those platforms, all you need to do is search the hashtag Del Bellos Designs. Okay, let's get started and look at the supplies that I'm going to be using today. Here in front of me is a piece of watercolor paper that I have, have adhered to a hardboard panel. I just simply used tape, um, painter's tape, to adhere this. And by using these boards, it really helps keeping your paper from curling. Now, prior to me even, have, even having this board, I just did it on a flat surface such as this. I allowed the paper to curl. And to be honest with you, no big deal flattening that paper. You can iron it. You can put weights on top of it. You can run it through an empty dye machine to flatten it. It still works, so you don't need to use one of these boards if you don't have one. Just simply adhere it to the work surface that you're using, allow it to curl and dry naturally. All right, this watercolor paper that I am using today, I am using this brand simply because that's what was at the store. No particular reason. It is a nice watercolor paper. It's a 140 pound, 300 GSM size and weight. This is a 9 by 12 that I've just divided off evenly. We're going to be using just plain old table salt. I'm going to use some pink Himalayan salt. I'm using some salt flakes and some good old ground pepper. I have a very cheap set of watercolor um, paints here. They work just fine for me for all the water coloring that I do. Naturally, some water and a brush. And this is a nice flat brush. I believe that the width is three quarters of an inch, but use whatever you have on hand. It'll work. Okay, so in doing this in the past, I found the trick to be the more water, the better. So the first step is to apply a healthy coat of water to your paper and let it puddle. It's okay that it puddles. You'll get a better result that way. After I have that applied, I'm going to just go ahead and dip into my colors. And again, I am going to really soak up the color, apply it to my paper and just let it do its thing. That's the fun about watercolor. You can just let it do its thing and have fun with it. I'm just going in the color order that's on this little palette of mine. Now, another fun thing about watercolor is it just kind of does its own thing and moves wherever it wants to go. And you can always go back and add more water, take away some of the water all up to you. Right now I'm just liking what I'm seeing, so I'm gonna just let it do its own thing. Add a little more green just for some interest. I think I'm gonna go in with a little more of this color. Again, you just play with this. There are no rules, there's no right, there's no wrong. Now I'm going to take several pinches of my salt. Get some out of here. 
and I'm just going to apply it liberally to the surface. You have to apply a lot to get a nice result. Then again, if you only want a small amount, that's fine too. You don't have to apply a lot. But for you to be able to see it, I feel I need to apply a lot for you. All right, so this needs to set and dry. And I would recommend that you let this set and dry for at least overnight, if not, you know, a full 24 hours and do not remove the salt. You want to leave that salt on. I'm gonna move over into my next section. Again, I'm going to apply the water liberally. Yeah, there's a little bit of blue in my water, but you know what, I'm not concerned about that. Remember to get a nice thick coat on there. This time I think I'll just you know, go with the next color palette that's on here and apply liberal amounts of this paint. Again, letting it do its thing. Just going to go down in the color order that's here. No rhyme or reason. Now, if you don't put enough water on initially, don't feel, don't, you know, don't think you've ruined it. Just add a little more water as it goes. Now, if I were working on a flat surface and, and if I didn't have this taped to the board, my paper would be really curling on me, but that's okay. I, it's, it doesn't change the outcome. It just makes it a little more challenging to work, but it, it, it still works. I'm gonna add a little more pink up here to this top portion. And in this section, I'm going to be adding a healthy dose of the pink Himalayan salt. Now, Himalayan salt, you could get the chunky form. So naturally, if you use the chunky form of the salt, you would get uh, larger areas, uh, larger markings. And you won't see that and understand that, I guess, until I show you the end result. Okay, moving on into this next section. This is where I'm going to use the salt flakes. And salt flakes are what you see a lot of uh, people use on top of chocolates, on top of delicious sweet desserts. It's literally flakes of salt. All right. Let's go in here with some oranges for a nice color palette. Get some more color there. You can see how I'm really not taking any particular time with this. I'm just pushing on as much paint as I can just to get it to move around a little bit on its own. If you've never watercolored before, honestly, give it a try. It, it, it really is a lot of fun and you'll surprise yourself at, at the results. All right, in this section, we're going to use those salt flakes. Here's what they look like. You know, I've even seen where people have used rock salt. We're going to get a really good outcome with this because this is nice, chunky pieces of salt. Yeah, so think about rock salt. I mean, that would be a good one. I, I don't happen to have any. I don't use rock salt, but that would be a, a fun one to try. Okay, let me get that out of my section here. And lastly, let me get this one watered up a bit. And this time we're gonna use the pepper. I think you'll be surprised when you see the results of the pepper. Could you combine salt and pepper? For sure, why not? You can do whatever you want. This is your project but I wanted to keep them separate for you here so you could see the difference. All right, I wanna use a nice light color for this background. So I'm gonna go with a nice combination of yellows here. With the pepper, I would definitely recommend you using light colored paints to get the result. 
And again, you'll have to wait this out with me to get the result. All right, let me add a little bit of lighter yellow down here at the bottom. Uh, darken this up here at the top. All right, now with the pepper, I just, this is the only kind I have as a grinder. And again, the thicker the pieces of pepper that you use, the better your result is going to be. Now, if you only have the pepper that's in a shaker and it's fine, it's fine, just do that. Just apply a little bit more. All right, so at this point, I'm going to leave you, allow this to dry, and when I return, I will show you the results. Now remember, you have to allow the salt to sit on top of the wet paint. Don't mop anything up. Allow it to sit for at least overnight, if not a full 24 hours, and don't touch the salt. That's the main thing. Okay, I'll be back with the results in a few ticks of the clock. Hi guys. All right, it's been 24 hours. I took the watercolor card that I had adhered to my board and just placed it into a cookie sheet where I do a lot of my messy work to catch some of the pieces. And loving recording as much as I do, I started this and forgot to press record. So you missed me removing all of the salt. Simply what I did is I just took an old microfiber cloth and I brushed the salt off of each squared area. And you will find that it, the salt definitely sticks without a doubt because it's wet. And it does take a little bit of a strength to push that salt off. You want to get the area free of all the salt because hopefully you're either going to stamp on this or you are going to possibly stencil on top of this. So you really don't want any of those chunks of salt. So just continue working at it and rubbing. It does all come off eventually. Let me get everything removed and then I'm going to show you up close what this looks like. So starting in the first section, this is where I used simply the table salt. You can see the nice patterning effect that I got. It is still a little bit rough. Now there's gonna be some feeling, some tooth to this because number one, it's watercolor card and it's not a smooth surface. But you do want to work, like I said, at it to get all of the salt off of here. I still have a, you can hear a few pieces. So I, I need to work at that and continue rubbing to get those chunks off before I complete that card. This was the pink Himalayan salt. Not a whole lot of difference between the table salt and the pink Him Himalayan salt. Main reason because the size of the salt crystals were basically identical, but I did wanna show you that you can use pink Himalayan salt and get very similar results. Now here's a really nice result. This was using the salt flakes. This is definitely a larger print that you get from the salt compared to the regular. It created a really unique background. I love it. Now, if you would have a coarse pink Himalayan salt, you would get a result more like this, where the areas would be larger, not as fine. And then with the pepper, the result that you get is not as molted, but it leaves behind a really neat pattern of browns and tan shades that the paper absorbed from the pepper. So this was a, this is just a fun way to create a background, doing something a little bit differently. Now my next step will be to remove all of the tape, cut down my pieces to the card side that I, that I want, and then go on and create my card. I will create a card, well actually four cards out of this, and I will post the pics at the end of this video for you to see how the cards turned out. But for today's purpose, I just wanted you to see the result of using salt on top of watercolors, and give you another way to create a fun and unique background. 
Okay, thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon with the next video. Bye-bye.